Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have a really good example to understand the coefficient of restitution a lot more and also the concept of the center mass moving at a constant speed through any collision. So we make things a little bit simpler in this example. We have two masses that are exactly the same mass, M and M. The one on the left is moving to the right at 6 meters per second. The one on the right is moving to the left at 4 meters per second. And at this moment, t equals zero, they are 10 meters apart, which means the center mass is at five meters. One second later, they collide, because the one on the left moved six meters, the one on the right moved four meters, they're now in the same location. You can see now that the center mass is at six meters. The center mass moved to the right one meter in one second, which means it's moving at one meter per second. And as we learned in the previous videos, the center mass will continue to move to the right before, during, and after the collision at one meter per second. Now we put together a table that will help us understand the concept of coefficient restitution even better, and let's go through it and see what it all means. Notice when those two objects collide, what will happen afterwards depends upon the elasticity of the collision. If it's perfectly elastic, the second object, which was first moving to the left at 4 meters per second, will now move to the right at 6 meters per second. The one on the left, which was moving to the right at 6 meters per second, after the collision will move to the left at minus 4 meters per second. Energy is completely conserved. The total kinetic energy was equal to 52, and now when I calculated the kinetic energy, all I did was simply use the velocities. I ignored the one half. I ignored the mass. I simply said, I take this number squared plus this number squared to represent the kinetic energy before the collision, since we're simply looking at ratios, so the mass and the one half would simply cancel out anyway. And then the kinetic energy after the collision, since it's simply exchange velocities, would be exactly the same. And we can also say that the coefficient of restitution would be equal to one. If all the energy is conserved, C, the coefficient of restitution will be one. And here I showed you how I actually calculated that. But what we're going to do now is also calculate the kinetic energy before and afterwards relative to the center of mass. And we're also going to calculate C squared relative to the center of mass. C squared is not going to be relative to the ratio of the kinetic energy final divided by the kinetic energy initial, but this is only going to be true in the CM reference frame, in the center of mass reference frame. Which means that in case number one, so this is example number one, example number two, in example number one, the velocity final, so again we're going to take V2 final and V1 final, is now going to be different in this different reference frame. Because notice, center mass is moving to the right at one meter per second, so when V1 final is moving to the left at 4 meters per second relative to a fixed reference frame. It's going to be moving at 5 meters per second relative to the CM frame. So that would be V1 final would be a minus 5. And V2 final is going to be moving to the right at 6 meters per second, but relative to a moving reference frame that moves to the right at 1 meter per second, it's only moving at 5 meters per second, which means that the kinetic energy before and after will be 50 rather than 52 because 5 squared plus 5 squared is 50. Now for case number 2, notice that when V2 is moving to the right at 5 meters per second relative to the center mass, it's only going to be 4. And V1 final is going to be moving to the left at 3 meters per second, but relative to something moving to the right at 1 meter per second, it's going to be minus 4. And so you can see that the kinetic energies in this case would be 50. Here that would be 16 plus 16, which is 32. In case number 3, the final velocities will be 3 and minus 3. So when you square this and square this, you get 18. And then in case number 4, so this is case number 3. In case number 4, this is going to be moving to the right at 2 meters per second relative to the center mass. This is going to be minus 2, so that will be 4. In case number 5, the object to the right will be moving at 1 meter per second. The object on the left will be moving at minus 1, so this would be 2. And finally, in case number 6, notice that 
since they're moving together with the center of mass, the relative velocities to the center mass for both cases will be zero and zero, and therefore the kinetic energy after the collision relative to the center mass will be zero. And there's where the coefficient of restitution comes in. When it's a perfectly or a total inelastic collision, if no energy is conserved in the collision, we're talking about no energy conserved in the collision relative to the center of mass reference frame. So you can see that there's zero final kinetic energy because relative to the moving center mass, there is no velocity. So they're simply moving along with the center mass. Which means, if we now take a look over here, notice that the kinetic energy final relative to center mass is 50, 32, 18, 8, 2, and 0 after the various collisions. Notice the ratio of the final to initial kinetic energy, again in the center mass reference frame, will be a ratio of 1. In the first case, 0 0.64, 0 0.36, 0 0.16, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, and 0. And notice how that perfectly lines up with the coefficient of restitution quantity squared, notice those numbers are now exactly the same. There you can see that the coefficient of restitution squared is exactly equal to the ratio of the final kinetic energy to the initial kinetic energy in reference to the center of mass. In this case, that moving center mass, which is moving to the right at one meter per second. So we take the actual velocities, which are relative to a fixed earth, change them to velocities relative to the center mass, calculate the final kinetic energy, calculate the initial kinetic energy, take the ratios, and you can see that the ratios are exactly equal to the coefficient of restitution squared. And that's what we mean by the coefficient of restitution and what it actually stands for. That's how we did it.